Right guys, Mr. Polar Biology here for one final time for a paper one new spec specimen paper super secret teacher only set um, question. Uh, this is the last one for this playlist before tomorrow's exam 2016. Best of luck to everyone who's taken it. Uh, this last one's a phloem question with a little bit of genetic diversity in there as well. So we've got to read the following passage and it's a long one to finish off with. So we've got some insect species feed on the leaves of plants. These leaf chewers bite off pieces of leaves. Other insect species feed on sap from the phloem or from the xylem. These sap feeders have sharp piercing mouth parts that they insert directly into the xylem or the phloem. Uh, leaf chewers and insects that feed in the xylem sap are active feeders. Uh, this means they use their jaw muscles to obtain their food. In contrast, insects that feed on phloem sap are passive feeders. This means they do not use their jaw muscles to take up sap from the phloem. Blah, 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 blah. The first question relates to that little bit I've just read. So why are they passive feeders? They don't use their jaw muscles. How, how does that work? Well, basically, it's because as soon as you puncture the phloem, um, sap is going to be forced out. Uh, the reason being is that the phloem is under positive pressure. It's under high pressure. Phloem contents are under pressure. So it's going to be forced into the insect's mouth, into mouth parts. Uh, so forced into insect's face, which is nice. Um, but why is it that there is a high pressure? Well, it's basically what's happening up at the source. You should check out my other video on this because it sort of explains it a little bit, but I'll whisper it now. Um, what's happening is at the source, sucrose is being loaded in uh, into the phloem. So when that sucrose is loaded into the phloem, it reduces the water potential of the phloem, and that causes water potential, sorry, that causes water potential, that causes water to enter via osmosis. So water enters the phloem from the xylem, and that causes an increase in pressure. So it increases the pressure, increasing pressure. So check out my video because it does explain it uh, relatively well, I think. Um, and that's why, because uh, sucrose is loaded in, negative water potential is established, water moves in by osmosis. Um, oh, should really, really, really get osmosis in there, shouldn't I? Uh, by osmosis, really ram that home, make sure we know what we're talking about. Um, and that's going to cause an increase in hydrostatic pressure. So what's our next question? Uh, blah, 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 blah. It says we should go to line 11. And it says that uh, a phloem sap feeder polymerizes some of these sugars into polysaccharides. Why is this Why is this a good thing? So let's have a look. Line 11. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Phloem sap polymerizes sugars into polysaccharides, which passed out of the anus, lovely, as honeydew. All right. Why might that be a, a good thing? Well... Really, it's because polysaccharides, such as things like, oh, I don't know, starch, um, they're insoluble. So polysaccharides are insoluble. And because they're insoluble, that means they have no effect on the water potential um, of the insect's gut. So does not affect water potential of insects gut. If it made the, the gut very negative in terms of water potential, that would be a problem. Water would move out of the cells and that would be an issue of insects gut. So there we go. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's, that's all you can write for that one. That really is it. Um, and then we've got sort of a, let's have a look. Each phloem sap insect receives a few, that's key, of these bacteria from its parent. That's lines 14 to 15. 14 to 15. Each phloem sap insect receives a few of these genetic... So we don't really have to read the full article because it gives us what we need in the text. Um, and it says this results in a lower genetic diversity. So why? Well, the key is in this word few. So if we've only got a few, we don't have, you know, a full selection of all of the genes. So let's have a little look-see. We can say... Only f 
few bacteria passed on. Which is a problem. Okay, so we only have only a few genes. And even worse than only having a few genes is we might not have all of the alleles as well. So we may not have every possible combination of those genes. We may not have all alleles. And if we haven't got all the alleles, we can't have every possible combination. So therefore, our genetic diversity is, uh, is, is reduced. Uh, the other way you can go about it is that um, because you've only got a small number of bacteria being passed on means that the sample is not really representative of the full population. So there's another way of phrasing that, I guess. But last question then. Uh, oh no, penultimate question. Uh, a scientist found that leaf chewers and xylem sap feeders had a greater effect on... Uh, sorry, leaf chewers and xylem feeders had a greater effect on plant growth than phloem sap feeders. Other than environmental factors give two features that the scientists would have controlled to make sure that the conclusion was valid. So basically, what this guy wants to do is stick a bunch of insects of one variety, say a bunch of leaf chewers on one plant and a bunch of phloem sap feeders on another plant, and let's uh, let's see what happens, basically. So things we need to keep the same would be uh, the number of insects for, on each plant, number of insects of each type on plant, so keep that nice and fair. Uh, uh, of each type on plant and other things we need to know like the size of the you know how we, are they young insects are they old insects are they you know because older insects might you know they might be larger they might need more food or younger insects might need more food because they're developing we just don't know but certainly uh, the the size um, of the insects would be would be important size of insects you could also say the size of the plant as well, I guess, um, because that would be um, that would determine how readily it could cope with being chomped away at. So last little bit then, I think. The scientist used the reduction in total leaf area of the experimental plant as an indicator of plant growth. How could you find the area of a plant leaf? Right, nice and straightforward. This is like year seven area of a treasure map, kind of, of a, uh, a desert island kind of thing. You take some squared paper or some graph paper. Here's my graph paper. Uh, you draw around the leaf like that. And you count the number of squares. That's it. That's all you need to do. So draw around leaf on graph paper. and count the squares. And that is it. I hope this uh, series has been useful. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and best of luck if you are sitting the exam tomorrow, or whenever this is. Um, best of luck. Approach it in a logical way. Don't think too deeply about things. Paper one is going to be pretty much fact recall, um, and just know your stuff, I hope. <laughs> if not, uh, watch my videos some more. I really hope you guys do as well as possible.